Hi YouTube, it's Sam Norris here, the Property Investors Broker, back with another property finance video for you. And today we are talking all about bridging finance. <laughs> Property is about patience. Welcome back guys. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of this video, please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the like button below. It really helps me reach a much, much wider audience. So today we're talking about bridging finance, particularly talking all about how we actually apply for bridging finance. And I'm going to talk you through the application process. Now, how do I know how this process works? Well, we deal with literally hundreds of bridging applications on a yearly basis uh, for our clients as brokers. And so we really understand no matter what lender we're going to go with, what the process is going to be and what I'm going to go through with you in a couple of seconds really is kind of like the basic process that most lenders conform to. Some will do it in a very, very slightly different way, uh, but really what I'm about to share with you is effectively how most lenders are going to do things. So let's kick off then. Number one, we have to actually do some research first. So once we speak to our clients for the first time, we do a bit of deal analysis. Um, I've got my own bridging calculator that I use. We, we have a chat over the phone at the moment because obviously it's locked down with our clients and we run through the figures of the deal. We're using bridging finance usually with BRR, by refurbished refinance, or with a flip, so a development project or refurbishment project. So first of all, we'll analyze the deal. That's number one. Um, once we've analysed the deal and make sure that it works, we're generally looking on a flip for about a 20 to 30% return on investment. Obviously, BRR can be a little bit different. But once we've established that the deal is actually a goer, um, number two in the process is that we will put together a proposal that will get sent out to the lenders that we think are most likely to take on your case um, and get it through to completion in the swiftest way, the easiest way, and hopefully as well the cheapest way. Now, a quick interlude here. Um, when we're looking at mortgages, there is an abundance of uh, search software and things like that to allow us to source uh, products across the market. There is, no, there is no such thing when it comes to bridging lending. So really, when it comes to us as brokers, it's all up there. So the more volume of, of these types of transactions you're involved with, the better the understanding you're gonna have of the market, who's doing what, when and where, and what lenders are gonna be the most perfect lender for your exact deal. Now, um, as with, um, you know, I've made a few mistakes early on in my career when I um, didn't really do proposals particularly well. Unfortunately, I've heard a lot of horror stories of brokers effectively chucking um, as much <clears throat> against the wall and hoping as much of it sticks as possible. And basically what I mean by that is throwing a lot of basic figures at a lot of lenders um, and just hoping that one will come back and actually be able to do the deal. From feedback we've had from lenders, that's not how we go about doing things. We put together a very, very good and thorough proposal because what we're trying to do with these proposals is basically do a sort of a one and done when it comes to getting terms from these lenders. Now, what I mean by that is if you don't give a full description and a thorough uh, proposal sent over to the lender, their credit team are going to be coming back and forth with questions and it literally becomes like a tennis match. Um, I'll send something to them, they'll come back with more questions. I'll send something more to them, they'll come back with more questions. When I say one and done, I mean one and done. Let's get it over there, let's get them to understand the uh, the proposal as best we possibly can, and we want the lender to come back with terms on the first go. Now, obviously, you you know if we get two or three different sets of terms and they're pretty decent and, and the, the, the lenders are really um, up for doing this particular deal and they're really keen to do this deal, it really helps us as brokers because we can maybe go back and negotiate things a little bit and maybe play them off a little bit against one another. Don't want to do that too much because it will actually aggravate lenders doing that and, and you know we need to keep those relationship, relationships, I should say, in check. But we can do a little bit of negotiation at that point. So really good thorough proposals sent over to lenders is, is a massively, massively important part of this process. Now, number three 
is actually then applying. We choose the right lender that we're gonna use, probably a mixture of the cheapest and the one with the best service. If we're buying at auction or we've got a deadline, maybe the fastest may come into that as well. But the next part of the process, as I said, is actually the application process. Now for you as an investor, this is probably the most labor intensive part of the entire process because we need to package the application. There's no good sending over a completed application form back to a lender um, and leaving it at that. The underwriter is going to get it, they're going to look over it and they're going to come back with a, a large number of questions. Now, we already know in advance what the underwriter is going to ask for because number one, it will actually be written out on the terms that they send over, a basic list of what they need. But as the broker, we're in direct communication with these lenders and we are gonna understand what they need. We're gonna ask them what they need over and above their standard uh, list. And we will make sure that we get all of that stuff in advance. So maybe in a different video, I'll go through that list in a bit more detail. But for now, just understand that there is quite a lot of stuff that's gonna be on that list from ID and proof of address all the way through to schedule of works and development appraisals, depending on the deal type. So lots of doc documentation and information that you as the investor are going to have to pull together with the help of ourselves in order to um, make sure that we fully package, is the terminology we, we use, the, um, the loan. And we make sure that goes straight to the underwriter, no dilly-dallying, putting it through some sort of sales team, straight to the underwriter. And we hope um, that, uh, that they can acknowledge that pretty quickly. Now, part four, if I can put the right number of fingers up, is the underwriting process. Now, generally speaking, and where this differs from mortgages is that uh, with, a, with a mortgage, sometimes you're waiting five or six days um, for, the, for the case to even get to an underwriter. Generally speaking, with Bridging, we find that the, uh, the, the application is with the underwriter pretty much straight away and it can take them usually somewhere between one and three days to get the initial underwriting done. We did an application recently where we submitted everything over to a lender at half past nine in the morning. Um, they had completed their initial underwriting by quarter past two in the afternoon, not too shabby at all. Um, so that's what we want to get at. Um, that only happened because we had fully packaged that case. So again, just reiterating how important it is to get everything ready on that side of things. So that's uh, that's part four, the underwriting process. Can be extremely quick if we do it the right way and we choose the right lender. Now, part five of the process is the valuation. Now, with mortgages, things happen in a pretty linear fashion. And what I mean by that is you, just, you do a decision in principle, you then do an application, the underwriting comes next, you then get the valuation, and then you go to legal as well. With bridging, there is a bit more of a, a gray area and overlap between a lot of those uh, parts of the process. And the valuation is just one example of that. Because as the lender is doing their initial underwriting, or should I say the underwriter is doing their initial underwriting, they will also pretty much straight away go and get quotes for a survey and they should have those back, generally speaking, within 24 hours of them receiving the application and the documents that we've sent over to them. So we will be able to instruct that valuation before the initial underwriting is complete. And at the moment, generally, as soon as the instruction has taken place, um, the booking usually happens somewhere between two and three days afterwards. So in real terms, if we instruct the valuation within 24 hours of the application being submitted, we can actually get the uh, survey done maybe a day or two after the initial under underwriting has been complete. So it's a much shorter process. Um, generally speaking with these surveys, um, and I will go into a bit more detail on perhaps another video on this, um, but the, the, the surveyor that goes out to see the property is not just going to be going out and doing a survey for mortgage purposes. They are going to go into a bit more detail. If there's work to be done, they will work out what the potential GDV is going to be. GDV stands for Gross Development Value, just so that you guys are aware. Um, and what this basically means is the value of the property once you've actually completed the works that you have set, set out to do. Um, they'll also uh, look at the open market value currently. They'll give it a 180 day and a 90 day valuation as well. What they basically mean is if you were limited to selling the property within six months or three months, 180 days, 90 days respectively, would that have a significant 
difference in the uh, in the in the value or the, the price that you could probably sell the property for. So a little bit more goes into these kind of surveys, and there that's where, why we find that usually these reports take about five working days once the survey has actually been done um, to get those reports back to the underwriter because there's just a little bit more involved in um, in doing these reports. So important to remember. Now part five of the process is the legal process. Now, this is massively, massively important. And depending on the lender, it will um, effectively happen pretty soon in the process. So some lenders will be happy to instruct legals pretty much straight away once they've received the application or they um, sometimes will wait until the um, until the survey has been done. But as I said before, it's not as linear as uh, as a mortgage application is. So we can sometimes have a bit of an overlap. Essentially, what will happen is that the uh, the lender will instruct their own solicitors. Their solicitors will then contact your solicitors to get the legal work underway. Now, it's important to note that the legal uh, process when it comes to um, bridging and development finance is a little bit different to um, the process with a mortgage. And without going into a lot of detail, um, effectively, if you think about the kind of um, legal packs that are sent out by mortgage lenders to, uh, to solicitors, um, it's pretty well spoon fed. They'll have a very, very bespoke and particular list of inquiries that are needed together with instructions on how to carry those out. That means that you don't really need the most experienced solicitor in the world to do this kind of work for you, which is why a lot of lenders will do free legals and they'll send those out to sort of call centre style operations. A lot of them seem to be in South Wales for whatever reason, um, and they will be uh, looked after pretty adequately by those guys. Some of them might be sort of trainees, some of them um, very early on in their career. Now, when it comes to bridging, we can't afford to go down that route, unfortunately, because what a lender will do is they will send a kind of one size fits all type inquiry list um, to, over to your solicitor. And it really is down to your solicitor to understand which of those points is are relevant and which are the ones that they don't need to do. So they need to have an experience of how these uh, types of arrangements go. Because if you can imagine sending over that kind of list to an inex inexperienced solicitor, they're not going to know um, where to get started on this. And look, I'm all for um, everyone having to learn the ropes at some stage, but let's not get them to learn the ropes on your particular case. Let's leave that to some someone else. Um, so it's really important to get a uh, very experienced commercial solicitor on board with these types of things. And so what will happen during that process, as I said, is there'll be communication if you're purchasing the property between your solicitor, the lender's solicitor, the vendor's solicitor, and eventually all the inquiries will be met, certificate of title will be sent over, and it's at that stage that we reach the end of the process with, um, with the funds being drawn down, uh, firstly from the lender to their solicitor, their solicitor to your solicitor, your solicitor obviously sent over to the vendor's solicitor in order to complete the purchase. Uh, so there we go. Um, pretty straightforward, isn't it, really, when you think about it? We start off with the research uh, part of things. That's really down to, to us as brokers to take information from yourselves, analyse the deal um, and, uh, and understand um, the, the process. We then move on to um, the uh, uh, pr basically the proposal stage where we are putting together um, a proposal to send over to lenders to get them to want to do the deal, to get it straight through to credit and from them uh, to come uh, back to us with terms. We then have an application stage, which as I said, pretty onerous from your point of view as the investor there, lots of documentation to get together. Um, we then go through the initial underwriting stage, the valuation stage, and finally on to legals before we can complete. Guys, I really hope that that was helpful. I've tried to keep things as simple as possible on this particular video. So if you do have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I will get to them as, uh, as soon as I possibly can. Uh, but for now, thanks ever so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you guys on the next video. See you later.